to School of the Brock. I'm celebrating today. I'm really excited about today's episode. Do you remember last week when we talked about the feel bad part of the Easter story? Yeah, we talked about Jesus' death on the cross, and that was the hard part of the Easter story to listen to. This week, we get to move on to the really feel good part of the story, the part about how Jesus rose from the dead, and that's why I'm celebrating. <laughs> Jesus rose from the dead. Of course we should celebrate this. It's the part of the Easter story that I love the most. Now, over the last three weeks, we have been exploring prophecies about the Messiah found in the Old Testament. And we've talked about how Jesus fulfilled them. We have, however, been more focused on the prophecies about the death of the Messiah. Who remembers what Messiah means? Okay, I'm going to give you three choices, and you see if you can guess the correct one. All right. Is the Messiah A, the stubborn king of Egypt, who wouldn't let God's people go free from slavery? Or B, a messenger that passed on special messages from God to his people? Or C, the one God had promised to his people who would save them and set them free? Go ahead and shout out your answers. You are correct. It is C. The one God had promised to his people who would save them and set them free. This week, we'll focus on a prophecy specifically about his resurrection. Okay? <laughs> that sound means I've used a word that needs some explaining. And that word is resurrection. Resurrection means to rise from the dead or to miraculously come back to life after death. The prophecy we'll be looking at about the Messiah's resurrection is found in Psalm 16, 9 to 11. Let's take a look at that passage right now. So I rejoice and I am glad. Even my body has hope. This is because you will not leave me in the grave. You will not let your Holy One rot. You will teach me God's way to live. Being with you will fill me with joy. At your right hand, I will find pleasure forever. All right, there are some phrases that I want to take a closer look at in this passage. The first is, you will not leave me in the grave. The second one is, you will not let your holy one rot. Hmm, does that sound like it's talking about someone who died and stayed dead? Or does it sound like someone who died but came back to life? To me, it definitely sounds like someone who came back to life. I think it's time to jump into the New Testament story about what happened after Jesus died and was put in the tomb found in Luke 24, 1 to 10. Let's take a look at that. Very early on the first day of the week, the women came to the tomb where Jesus' body was laid. They brought the spices they had prepared. They found the stone had been rolled away from the entrance of the tomb. They went in, but they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, two men in shining clothes suddenly stood beside them. The women were very afraid. They bowed down, their heads to the ground. Then the men said to the women, Why are you looking for a living person here? This is a place for the dead. Jesus is not here. He has risen from death. Do you remember what he said in Galilee? He said the Son of Man must be given to evil men, be killed on a cross, and rise from death on the third day. Then the women remembered what Jesus had said. The women left the tomb and told all these things to the eleven apostles and the other followers. These women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, mother of James, and some other women. The women told the apostles everything that had happened at the tomb. From this passage, we see once again that Jesus fulfilled another prophecy about the Messiah found in the Old Testament. Jesus died on a cross, was put in a tomb, which is a type of grave, but he didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead. Only God can do that. It wasn't enough for Jesus just to die on the cross to pay the price for sin. He had to rise from the dead to defeat death for us so we can begin a new life with Jesus as the boss of our lives. 
then when our bodies die, we can be raised to new life in heaven and live forever with God. If we had kept on reading in Luke 24, we would have seen that Jesus didn't just vanish after he rose from the dead, but he appeared to many people. This went on for 40 days before he returned to heaven. Let's take a look at the second part of Hebrew 1.3. He provided the way for people to be made pure from sin. Then he sat down at the right hand of the king. Hey, doesn't that sound familiar? Let's look back at the last line of the prophecy in Psalm 16 that we read earlier. It says, at your right hand, I will find pleasure forever. You see, Jesus continued to fulfill prophecies even after he returned to heaven, and he will continue to fulfill even more prophecies that have not yet come to pass. Over these past four weeks, we've looked at prophecies from the Old Testament about the Messiah's death and resurrection, and we learned that Jesus fulfilled them, proving that he was the Messiah. Some parts of the Easter story are hard to hear, and some make us feel good. It's not that there are bad parts and good parts of the story, because even the parts that make us feel bad are still part of a true story that is all good. It's all good news, because it tells us of God's amazing love for us all. God the Father loves us so much that he sent his Son to die on a cross for us. And God the Son loves us so much that he was willing to do this. Jesus died a horrible death to pay the price for our sin. Then he rose to life again so we too can be raised to new life and live with him forever in heaven one day. Now, we have finally come to our big idea for today. Let's say this together. Jesus the Messiah rose again so that we too can be raised to new life. The cool thing is that when we believe in Jesus and make him the boss of our lives, our new life begins. Jesus begins to help us become more and more like him. And we can be sure that one day after our bodies die, we'll join him in heaven forever. Now that you know the story of Jesus' death and resurrection, share this story with others. Don't keep this good news to yourself. God wants us to share it. Thanks for joining me today at School of the Rock. I hope you'll come back next week. We'll be starting a brand new series called Wonder Women. In this series, we'll be learning about heroic women of the Bible. Happy Easter to all of you. Bye for now.